We well, take you from polls in uh, Colombia to polls uh, here in France. Uh, the French are voting in the final round of parliamentary elections this Sunday. The poll could deprive the newly re-elected centrist president Emmanuel Macron of the absolute majority he needs to push through his reform agenda. In the first round vote, a left-wing coalition made a surprisingly strong showing. Uh, turnout at midday today was at 19 percent or thereabouts. That's uh, just a tad stronger than at the same time uh, last Sunday. Have a listen to what some of the voters have been telling us this uh, Sunday. In France, we are in a system with the executive on one side and the legislature on the other side. It's important to come and support the deputies who make the laws ultimately. It's my duty as a citizen to vote so that I can then give my opinion. I feel that if I did not vote, I would be in a somewhat difficult position to issue an opinion in the future. I saw that 60 to 70 percent of young people did not vote. I find that unbelievable. Even though we have our cards and we are the ones who can change things, we're still the ones who vote the least. I find it a bit scary even, so of course it pushes us to vote even more. Time for some analysis uh, on this uh, round two and final round of parliamentary polls. Douglas Herbert, our international affairs commentator, joins us. I mean, there are several scenarios, it has to be said, Doug, that uh, could come out of today. Uh, you know, will uh, Macron get the uh, absolute majority? We don't know. The least likely but, but possible scenario, Doug, is it? Is, would be a cohabitation, co as they say in French. Which Tell us literally more. means to co-inhabit, to coexist. Cohabitation is a peculiar, peculiarly French phenomenon. It's happened three times under the, uh, the Fifth Republic since Charles de Gaulle. It happened once in 1986, it happened in 1993, and it happened in 1997. So unusual, but not completely implausible. What it is, it, it basically what happens is when you have a president, a head of state, such as, say, Emmanuel Macron, who is essentially forced to co-inhabit or coexist politically with a prime minister who is from a majority party, a, an opposing party to that of the president, one that is the majority party in parliament. So you have presidential elections, then you have parliamentary elections. And if the party that emerges from those parliamentary elections is a majority that is opposed, adversarial to the president, you have two political adversaries, basically, one running the government and one the head of state who is conducting foreign policy. Now, in the past, cohabitation, ironically, has worked according to the French, rather well. The politicians hate it, but the French people tend to like it, They're getting those adversaries to have to govern mm. together and work together. Um, and the, but the reason, perhaps, that it's worked is because in the past, whether it was Mitterrand with Jacques Chirac, a socialist with a conservative, or, or later Mitterrand with Édouard Balladeur, also a conservative, or even later than that, you had Jacques Chirac as president having to co-inhabit with a socialist, Lionel Jospin, mm. a Trotskyite, actually. Um, and ironically, it sort of worked. Worked. It sort of worked, but that would probably not happen today, given the uh, the tenor of the opposition leader, uh, and given uh, who uh, Emmanuel Macron is. They are far apart on a lot of issues, uh, especially on big issues involving Europe and world affairs. I'm not going to go into the specifics of that. That's why cohabitation today would be a dicier affair. Um, it's also less likely. They changed the Constitution in 2000 to make the presidency five-year terms instead of seven-year terms. The legislative elections are right after the presidential elections now. So it's much more hypothetical, this scenario, that mm. a cohabitation would happen. But as you pointed out, it could. It could. All right. Well, there are two let's say, more likely scenarios that could come yeah. off of the back of uh, today's uh, second round of parliamentary polls. Walk us through those, if you will, Doug. I'll do it in the order of more likely and less likely, although I'm not a prognosticator, <laughs> so who knows? I could be totally wrong. We'll see, uh, right? Look, yeah, a little chart, and I also have, you'll see, cohabitation there in the third place. Absolute majority is for any head of state, any president, that is uh, the ultimate. laying the golden egg. That is what they all want. And I have 289 or more seats because that is the number, minimum threshold of seats you need to have an absolute majority. That means a majority that is unimpeachable. You cannot, no one can oppose you with it. You have a platform, you have an agenda, you can ram it through. You, you can sleep govern. Soundly. Sleep soundly, govern as you please. The second one is the more likely one. Doesn't mean it might you could get the absolute majority either of these parties but the hung parliament it's also a relative majority meaning the party of the president or whatever has a majority but it's not that absolute 289 seats or plus it falls a little short which means you have to cobble together votes from 
not necessarily political adversaries, but not completely like-minded politicians, mm -hmm. trying to get them to come to your side, having to cajole them, having to give them oh, sweeteners, wow. throw in a few bones and, <laughs> and, and, and pieces of raw meat there, get them to come over to your side. Uh, and that's the more likely scenario. If it were to happen to, uh, to Macron's party, they would need people from the Les Républicains, the conservative bloc. That's what a lot of people believe. Uh, and if it happened, uh, you know, with the opposition, with the, the left-leading alliance, well, it's unclear who they would need and who they would get. They might have enough seats uh, on their own. But that's the more, most likely, a relative majority needing to work with other people. From so if there's a hung parliament, that's when the charm offensive would start. Just all of it. Lay it on thick. Absolutely. Cajole and coax and Indeed. strong arm. <laughs> Doug, thank you very much for that roundup of the possible scenarios. And again, all will be uh, revealed at later this Sunday.